Good evening. My fellow kindred, my apologies for disrupting any business or interfering with prior engagements you may have had this evening. It is unfortunate that the affair that gathers us together tonight is a troubling one. We are here because the laws that bind our society, the laws that are the fabric of our existence, have been broken. As prince, I am within my rights to grant or deny the kindred of this city the privilege of siring. Many of you have come to me seeking permission, and I have endorsed some of these requests. However, the accused that sits before you tonight was not refused permission. Indeed, my permission was never sought at all. They were caught shortly after the embrace of this child. It pains me to announce the sentence, as up to tonight I considered the accused a loyal and upstanding member of our organization. But as some of you may know, the penalty for this transgression is death. Know that I am no more adjudicator than I am a servant to the law that governs us all. Let tonight's proceedings serve as a reminder to our community that we must adhere to the code that binds our society, lest we endanger all of our blood. Forgive me. Let the penalty commence. Which leads to the fate of the ill-begotten progeny. Without a sire, most child are doomed to walk the earth never knowing their place, their responsibility, and most importantly, the laws they must obey. Therefore, I have decided that this is bullshit! If Mr. Rodriguez would let me finish, I have decided to let this kindred live. They shall be instructed in the ways of our kind and be granted the same rights. Let no one say I am unsympathetic to the plights and causes of this community. I thank you all for attending these proceedings, and I hope their significance is not lost. Good evening. Your sire. Tragic. My apologies. But you see, there is a strict code of conduct that all of us must... must... adhere to, if we wish to survive. When someone, anyone, breaks these laws, they undermine the well-worn fabric of our centuries-old society. Understand my predicament. Allowing you to live makes me directly responsible for your subsequent behavior. So. What I'm offering is not generosity, but the opportunity to transcend the fate woven by your sire. This is your trial. You will be brought to Santa Monica. There, you will meet an agent by the name of Mercurio. He will provide the details of your labor. I've shown you great clemency. Prove it was more than a wasted gesture, fledgling. Don't come back until you do. Good evening. Tell them I got about 
this much time. We're out. All right. Now, we ain't got much time, but I figure somebody should fill you in on the bare bones stuff at least. Good save your hide. You look wobbly. You even had a drink yet? Oh, man, we're popping a cherry here. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, you're gonna love this. All right, check it out. Blood, it's your new rack of lamb, your new champagne, not your new fucking heroin, kid. Ha, <laughs> ha. Get ready, though, because, hey, it's never as sweet as the first time. But down around the corner there, I saw this human, or else he can't find his car. <laughs> All right. You go down there, casually. You creep up on him, the bear those little fangs and feet. Don't worry if you weren't captain of the wrestling team or something. Because it'll come so naturally, you think you've done it a thousand times already. <laughs> Forget that comic book crap, kid. It don't work that way. Now go for it. Be sure, though, that this is important, so listen up. Be sure not to drain them dry, okay? It might be hard to resist, but don't kill them. Mindless, bloodthirsty assholes. That's all you need to know for now, all right? Sabat got wind of the gathering here, so they figured they'd lose a little hell and a little heat on the new prince. No time for political rundown, Joe. 
have one, get out of here alive. Sabat might be mindless, but they hit like a Mack truck, like raging savages. Nothing a fledgling like he wants to mess with. Shh, shh. Heads up. Back away. Bastards. All right, we gotta vamoose out the back quick. I'll stay and keep a watch out. You get us into the office. The door's around the corner here. Shortcut. Well, nicely done, though. Not exactly an angel in life, were you? Cool. Now, if you want a lesson on how really not to act, take notes from those sabat assholes. You're a big bad vampire. Yeah, great, congrats. Now keep it to yourself. You go roar and you beat your chest and that's what you can expect. It's the same reason you don't let humans see you feeding. It's why the wolf doesn't want the sheep to know he's there. It's also why you don't go juggling dumpsters or outrun the 815 from Sacramento. And it's, and it's why you didn't know any of this when you woke up this morning. Keep our secret secret and you make things easier on all of us. We're living in the age of cell phone cameras. Fuck-ups ain't tolerated. Makes sense enough, right? Well, it ain't a casual thing for a fledgling like you. That party back there with the guy in the suit and the Magilla Gorilla? The assholes that put your sire to death? That's the Camarilla. <laughs> they make a tidy business out of enforcing vampire laws like this one. And you, my fugly friend, they're gonna have it extra hard. A little effort and the rest of us can blend in okay. I sighted in your hideous ass, it's the internet and it's all over. There's a reason most nuts for oxen smell like the sewer. Figure it out. All right, now don't worry, because I know the area a little. And you know what? I'm glad we're in this situation, you and I. It illustrates a point. You gotta utilize your surroundings. You do what you gotta do. Theft, destruction of property, breaking and entering. <laughs> These will be the least of your sins before the night's out. So look around here. We gotta get out the back there, through that magnetically sealed door. There must be a key someplace.
take that keycard and head out the back. I'll meet you out in the alley there. I'm gonna check out things from topside. Fucking waste of unlife, these sabbat vatos. You get winged? Hey, hey! Look at them potholes! Those will close up soon enough. Better feed, though. <laughs> There's someone down the stairs here. It's not the freshest catch, but he'll do. Well, when it comes to feeding, it's quality blood you're looking for, not the quantity. Bums and lowlife don't pack the same punch that a healthy, well-bred human will. Juice bags with a pedigree. That's the good stuff. But you gotta take what you can get. You ever had a PhD, kid? Ooh, that's good stuff. Remember what I said, though. Don't kill them. At least not the innocent ones. You're a monster now. Make no mistake. One of the damned and the fallen. You need to hold on to every last shred of humanity you have. An innocent's an innocent. You kill one. Even a worthless bum, even by accident, and it's gonna cost you a piece of your own humanity. Bring you closer to that beast you got welling up inside you. The beast, it's always there. It's waiting to take over. When it does, it's like a wild animal wearing your skin. Desperate, scared, reckless. He'll do anything to survive, and it's you that has to deal with the consequences. I said innocent humans. If some asshole levels a 12 gauge your way, you drain him, skin him, and bash in his skull. Self preservation is a vital part of humanity, after all. My favorite part, in fact. <laughs> the only way to fight the beast is to keep in touch with your humanity and don't go hungry. It's a fine line. All right, now go feed. Careful, though. He's gonna drain fast. Not quite as good, huh? Yeah, you can do worse. This is a rat's down the way. You think I'm kidding? You can survive being on animals if you can stomach that kind of thing. Well, give it a try. Right to that, huh? I guess for a NOS, rat eating is natural as eczema. Keep it down. Got someone around the way here. Not too much of a threat by himself, but you never know if there's more in shouting range. You're gonna have to sneak past. The building across from us with the garage door? There's some double doors on the far side. I'll meet you inside. Just stay low and stick to the shadows. And don't let him see you. All right, go.
That shovelhead outside just got separated from his pack. He's wounded too. Go take care of him. Don't worry, he's probably greener than you. The Sabbat, you see, they don't have the most rigorous training program. In fact, that poor sod is lucky if he knows he's a vampire. He's probably just turned and beaten over the head. They like to do that big shock troops, cannon fodder, put him out of his misery. He is a vampire, so be ready. Go get him. That sounds like you got another pack moving in, though. The Sabat are going all out. You better head underground, avoid straight bullets. All right, head down into the basement through the grate in there. Keep that tire iron handy. I'll be there in a minute. sure what's going on. Sounds like the Sabbat's getting scattered. I'm gonna keep an ear to the ground. Be careful going forward here. Could be a whole mess of them holed up.
gangbangers protecting their turf, ah oh, man. I'm here thinking it's Sabat moving up in here. It's the fucking locals are about to take one for the hood. Yeah, they probably seen too much. Here, take this 38. Fucking pea shooter, but a few shots and it'll take down a human. Well, I'm gonna want it back, so don't go die and lose it. I don't use guns much. They're noisy, they're clumsy, practically useless against vampires, but still, a kindred's gotta keep up with the times. And in modern day Los Angeles, that means coming strapped. Well, yeah, you know, some are more lethal than others, of course. Watch out for those shotguns. Ouch, those things can smart, I tell you. Head up and clear out what's left of them. Can't have them running their mouths about any of this. I'm gonna make sure there's no stragglers around outside. That's it, kiddo. Just like that, it's all over. Everyone slinks back to their corners of the city for the night. Until the next night, when the Camarilla finds some way to strike back. Parry, dodge, spin and all that, and so on, and so on, and so on. Well, to be honest, we came at a, well, an interesting time, let's say. The Camarilla and the Sabat. Now, in L.A., these are the new kids on the block. There's already plenty of kindred at stakes down in California long before them. Now, we got every ancient kindred rivalry playing out all over the city. A lot of tension out there. A lot of fear. A lot of jittery, high-strung predators clinging to their little pieces of eternity. Oh, boy. Oh, I think they're looking for you outside. Guess you got a cab to catch. I was hoping to fill you in on a little bit more, but nah, hell, you'll figure it all out. If you make it back, stop in at the last round. It's this bar downtown here. I'll fill you in on the politics. <laughs> now that's the stuff that'll kill you. <laughs> Good luck. Hello, L.A. You're up way past your bedtime, aren't you? Hope you've slipped into something comfortable. I know I have. If you're new to town or just new to this whole radio thing, you're listening to The Dub of Night. The only girl who will spend the night with you and leave first thing in the morning, guaranteed. Well, looks like the boards are lighting up. Aren't I the popular one? Let's see. Eeny, the lucky... Caller, you've got the first shot at Deb tonight. So, who do I have the pleasure of speaking to? Hi, Deb. This is, uh, Vigo. Vigo? So, Vigo, why are you up so late? Um, I'm working the late shift here at the, uh, yacht club. Uh-huh. 
How many boats do you own, Hugo? Two. Actually, three. Uh, one is uh, in the shop. I used to do a little yachting myself. What brand of yacht do you have? Um, you probably wouldn't know the brand. I, uh, bought them in Italy. Ah, la Italia bella. Parlate italiano? Um, yes. Arrivederci, Hugo. Call it to you. You're on the dead of night. Be gentle. I am. Hello, caller. I am. Is tonight a rerun? Yep. Caller number three, what's keeping you up tonight? Dab, listen to me, Dab. They're at it again and people have got to know. They've got to know because they don't know. They won't report this stuff on the news because they own the news. Hello, Gomez. What's the latest conspiracy? Conspiracy? This goes beyond conspiracy, okay? There's no word for something as devious and secret as this, you understand? People need to hear this. They need to know the real story. You've got our undivided attention. Los Angeles Coast early this morning was caught into the port of Los Angeles a few hours ago. The ship was spotted around midnight by a fisherman who contacted the Coast Guard after their attempts to hail the ship were futile. Coast Guard officials are releasing very little information right now, but have identified the vessel as the Elizabeth Bay. No word has of yet as to the whereabouts of the crew, though the Coast Guard are asking any ships that have contact with the Elizabeth Bay to assist them in their search. We'll have more on the story as it breaks. In other news, an apparent third victim of the Southland Slasher has prompted the closing of the Santa Monica Pier, where the body was found earlier tonight. Investigators say the scene closely mirrors those of slayings in Glendale and Long Beach. In both cases, the bodies of the victims were described as torn apart, though details are being withheld from the public at this time. Police urge anyone with information relating to this case to contact them. Actor Ash Rivers is lucky to be alive after his car crashed into the oh, game. Seriously, drop these up your ass. Here, try this one. Mmm. Hey. Mmm. Motherfucking great chicken right there. What is this? It's freaking chicken. This is cat, right? Are you feeding me cat? Try this. Holy fuck. Fuck, that's good. What the fuck is this shit? Nine out of ten people. People preferred friggin' chicken over the cup. Petition. Why? Because that's some good fucking chicken. I mean, friggin' chicken. Friggin' chicken. You'll swear it's the best you've ever had. You love the talking baby movie, and the talking pig, and even the talking car in that show. You know the one I'm talking about. But now prepare for the most hilarious talkingest normally nude object yet. He's Steve Cash, a New York banker, and recently we were down on his luck. And Ted makes 100. Here's your money, ma'am. Ma'am, I happen to have a glandular problem. That's it. I'm withdrawing all my millions from this bank. Cash! She's an ATM machine with the soul of his dead wife. You got, you got some change, mister? That's very nice. Thank you.
Good evening. <laughs> nice work on the face there. I got a friend who's into the body sculpting scene, ghost conventions and stuff. You know, not my thing, but uh, I can appreciate it. You know. Nice job with the ears there, especially. That's right, dude. Um, no, not, not really. Sorry. Thanks for coming back. What you need? No, I said, well, I, I mean, I don't have any guns. No guns. What? I'm not, uh, properly licensed to carry major weapons. You know, anything beyond a pocket knife is mine personally. You know, like, just for show. Well, I don't know. I don't really know you. All right, look. I just don't sell weapons, okay? All right, here's what we got today. Get away from me. Get away. Leave me alone. Those mothers ripped me off. I'm dying here. Uh, yeah. You looking for the astrolite? I'm... Oh, I can feel a draft on my fucking insides. They shank me. The bastards. The blood ain't working no more. My head, it feels cracked. Oh, I think my eyes popped. I got... I went... What is this lump? Is this my rib? Oh, holy shit. My rib is broken through my side? Oh, I'm all numb. You gotta look and tell me. Goddamn chemist. Can't trust any operators in LA. I verified him. Organizations seem reliable. The guy mixes up speed. His crew sells it. Occasionally does explosives. I set up a drop. I show up at the beach with the money, right? Four of these guys, they come out of nowhere. Junkie pricks hit me with a bat. <coughs> and 
feels like I got a friggin' horse kick in it. Those cocksuckers beat me rotten, left me for a stiff. I had to crawl to my car, crawl my ass up here. The vamp blood's the only thing holding me together. But shit, they got the money, they got the astrolite. Right, you're straight off the bus. Once a month I get fed vampire blood. Heals me faster, makes me stronger than a normal human. I don't age. By looking at me, you wouldn't realize it, but I'm almost 60. Hold on. You think I'm some amateur? I got their number. Those small-time sons of bitches live out in a dump on the beach. Maybe four or five of them. The one's got the explosives is Dennis. Got my money too, that prick. Laying in a pool in my own blood and you want friggin' directions. Right, all right. Uh, down the street, in the parking garage, stairs down to the beach. On the right. <clears throat> Those better not be some of my last words. You gotta... You gotta get it back from him. Maybe reason with him, maybe break in. I don't know. I wanna kill him. Do whatever you people do. I blew it, I know. Yeah, if you could... Oh, something just started leaking. I need something for the pain. Ah, uh, one more thing. About the deal, I mean it. You tell anyone about this, I'm dead. I'm begging you. I got a way of getting people what they need. You don't say anything. I can help you out. 